This is the second video for section 7.2 Law of Sines. In the first video, we talked about how to solve angle side angle and angle angle side triangles with Law of Sines. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve angle side side problems with Law of Sines. Back in geometry, we talked about how angle side side was not an appropriate congruence theorem to prove two triangles were congruent. The reason for that is the given information could be congruent triangles or they could be two different triangles. So because of that, when we're solving angle side side problems using the law of sines, it's a little bit trickier. So we actually call it the ambiguous case because with the information given, you could have zero, one, or two triangles. So this first example, we wanna solve a triangle with side lengths one, two, and angle of 50 degrees. So using this information, draw out a triangle that would match this description. So make sure you have your angle of 50 degrees across from side of length one, and then next to that would be side length two. So now we have an angle side side triangle. I've written out my given information, and now we need to find the missing pieces. Unlike the other law of sines problems where you could immediately find the missing angle, we're only given one angle instead of two. So I'm just gonna go straight to setting up my law of sines ratios. So looking at my law of sines ratios, I have sine of 50 degrees over one is equal to the sine of beta over two, which is equal to the sine of gamma over C. So what piece of information should we solve for first? This ratio here has one known information and one unknown. So we're gonna solve for that one. Over here, we don't know gamma or C, so we can't use either of those to solve for a missing piece. So we're gonna set up sine of 50 degrees over one is equal to the sine of beta over two. So that means that the sine of beta is equal to two times the sine of 50 degrees. This is your first test point. We need to know whether we have one, zero, or two triangles. And at this step, this is your first pause to test. So go ahead and pause the video and plug two sine of 50 degrees in your calculator and see what you get. So you should have gotten 1.532. So this is the sine of an angle is equal to over one and a half. What is the range for sine? The range of sine is negative one to one, but we got something that was outside of that. Is that possible? That's not possible, so therefore this triangle is not possible. This is greater than one, which you can't have. So this example, we have no triangles. So your first pause when you're solving an ambiguous case is right here at the very beginning when you're going to solve for this first angle and plug this into your calculator. If you get something that's bigger than one or less than negative one, then you're not gonna have any triangles at all. If you go the step further and actually solve for beta, your calculator will say error and that's also how you know you're not gonna have any triangles. So now the question is, how do we know whether we have one triangle or two triangles? So here we have some given information. We have side lengths of six and eight and an angle of 35 degrees. Pause the video, draw your triangle, write out your given information and your law of sines ratios. So we have our given information. Angle 35 degrees should be across from side length six. Beta should be across from eight and gamma should be across from C and I wrote out our law of sines ratios. So now again, first thing I'm gonna try and solve for is beta. So go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing we did on the last example and test to see whether or not we're even gonna have triangles at all. So if you do the sine of beta is equal to eight sine 35 degrees over six, you end up with 0.764, which is between negative one and one. So we're gonna have at least one triangle. So now to solve for beta, you just take the sine inverse of what you just got and plug that in your calculator and find the angle beta. If you plug that in your calculator, you end up with 49.886 degrees. So we know we're gonna have at least one triangle and it's beta is gonna be that value that we just found. So now you have a couple options. A lot of students like to just continue on and solve for everything else for gamma and C for this same triangle. But I always move on and test to see if we have a second triangle first. So I always like to know whether I'm gonna have to solve one triangle or two triangles. So from here is where our test is to see if we have a second triangle. So we just found what I call beta one. I call all of these, these are from my first triangle, so I'll call them all subscript one. 
So if I want to find my beta on my possible second triangle, it's 180 degrees minus the angle that you just found. So it's the supplementary angle of the original angle, this first angle that you just found. So if you plug that in your calculator, you'll find that if we do have a second triangle, its beta angle is going to be 130.113 degrees. So again, we find this angle by taking the angle that we find originally from our very first law of sines and take the supplementary of it. So our second triangle would be 180 degrees minus the angle that you just found, and that's how we got the 130.113. If you do have a second triangle, all the given information holds true. So you'll see I put up here, the given information, the 35 degrees, the 6, and the 8, exist in both triangles. So we know that alpha 2 is still equal to 35 degrees. So if we know beta and alpha, how can we find angle gamma 2? So again, it's still just a triangle. So we have this triangle. All three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So subtract the known alpha, 35 degrees, from the, and the beta that you just found, 130.113, from 180 degrees. And you end up with 14.886 degrees. So this is how we know that we're actually going to have two triangles. So again, over here is our first triangle. We found a beta. We're testing to see if we have a second triangle by finding our supplementary angle beta 2, which would be the possible beta in our second triangle. The alpha stays the same. We found the gamma by just all three angles add up to 180 degrees. And we found this value, and it's positive. If this angle here is positive, you know you're going to have two triangles. So again, if you find gamma 2 and it's positive, you're going to have two triangles. So now we have to solve out both triangles. You can either go back and continue solving triangle 1, find your gamma 1 and your C1, or you can find your finish solving out your second triangle and find your C2. So go ahead and pause the video, use the law of sines to finish solving both of these two triangles. Make sure you keep them separate. Anything that's a second triangle is a second triangle, so gamma 2 is connected with C2. Anything with a first triangle, so a gamma 1, is connected to a C1. So using law of sines, C, I did sine of 35 degrees over 6 is equal to sine of 14.886 over C2, so therefore C2 is 2.687 degrees, uh, 2.687. Then over here, gamma 1 would be 180 degrees minus alpha 1 and beta 1, so it would be 95.114 degrees. And then similarly, law of sine, 6 sine 95.114 degrees over sine of 35 degrees would be equal to 10.419. So all of this information is your answer to this problem. So go ahead and try this one. We have a triangle that has side A of 3, side B of 2, and angle alpha of 40 degrees. So draw your triangle, set up your law of signs, and don't forget to test to see if there's 0, 1, or 2 triangles. So if you set up your triangle and your law of signs, the red is what is the given information. And then I solved for beta first. I checked it, and it is less than 1, so I know that I'm going to have at least one triangle. And I found that beta is 25.373. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and continue working on this problem. So if you test to see if there's a second triangle, you find beta 1 to be 25.373 degrees, which means beta 2 is the supplement of that, 154.626 degrees. Alpha 2 stays the same because that's a given. So then if you go to solve for gamma in the second triangle, you'll find that it's negative. That's not possible, so that's how we know there's only one triangle. So this side over here, it doesn't exist, so you don't have to worry about continuing to solve for beta or triangle 2. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and finish solving out this first triangle. So if you continue solving out, you end up with gamma 2, or sorry, gamma 1 is... 114.627 degrees, and then set up law signs, you end up with C is 4.242. So remember, whenever you're doing a law of signs problem, it's angle side angle or angle angle side problems, or the ambiguous case, angle side side, which you have to test to see if there's zero, one, or two triangles.